Donald Trump getting closer to the Republican nomination, but with Governor Casey's win in the home state, his home state of Iowa. No, Ohio. Another one that sounds like it. There's more talk about an open convention now, but Trump predicting chaos if he's not named the nominee, even if he doesn't have the necessary number of delegates. I think we'll win before getting to the convention, but I can tell you, if we didn't, and if we're 20 votes short, or if we're, if we're, you know, 100 short, and we're at 1,100 and somebody else is at 500 or 400, because we're way ahead of everybody, I don't think you can say that we don't get it automatically. I think it would be, I think you'd have riots. I think you'd have riots. Meantime, President Obama says Trump's destructive language is damaging the country's reputation. We have heard vulgar and divisive rhetoric aimed at women and minorities, at Americans who don't look like us or pray like us or vote like we do. And this is also about the American brand. Who are we? How are we perceived around the world? Why would we want to see that brand tarnished? Time to debate. Bringing in Chris Plant, syndicated radio talk show host, and Leslie Marshall, syndicated radio talk show host as well, and a Fox News contributor. Chris, let me start with you. Uh, first uh -huh. of all, with uh, Trump saying that there will be riots if we don't get, if he doesn't get actually to that magic number of 1237 delegates, but he's close and somebody yeah. else is, is pretty far behind, will there be riots? Well, I, riot might be a strong term, but then again, it might not be. Honestly, if he comes in and he is far and away the front runner in terms of delegates, and the RNC comes in and tries to strip him of what might appear to be rightfully his, there will certainly be pandemonium and chaos. Let's say there will be rioting outside because the left <laughs> will be rioting outside. I will hope that there won't be rioting inside, but there will certainly be chaos. All right, Leslie. Chris, I think I need to shoot you some video links later of what happens inside some of these uh, Trump rallies. A question oh, I fear to, that the, the riot left may not. Him up. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about some of his supporters with their fist in their face in North Carolina. But let's move on. With, uh, yeah. When we look at, when we listen to the word riot, although it is a strong word, and I agree with Chris there, I fear that is what will happen. And I fear, in a sense, Donald Trump almost uh, code speaking to his supporters. Hey, I don't get that nomination. You know what to do. I fear this is what they hear when they hear their leader speak and I fear that this would be the level of violence that we would see Please. and, and I, I'm fearful of that for, okay. for the voters well, maybe that are supporting Discord, I I maybe discord guys but not necessarily violence cities. maybe discord but not necessarily violence okay I want you to listen now to Donald Trump and Senator Ted Cruz at some recent events and tell me whether or not you would characterize or how you would characterize their volume of their speech listen to them Vote for Trump, I promise you, I am gonna do such a great job. You will look back two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you're gonna say, that's the single greatest vote I ever cast. Who stand and fight for freedom, who stand and fight for the Constitution, and who stand and fight for the Judeo-Christian values that built this great nation. All right, so Chris, is that shouting? Well, that's speaking assertively and perhaps somewhat aggressively, and there's crowd <laughs> noise. Uh, and politicians have been doing that for time immemorial. And uh, some people's voices are more annoying than other people's ah, voices. Okay, it sounded like <laughs> shouting to me. Uh, Leslie, let's listen now to Hillary Clinton last night. <laughs> And if we work together, if we go forward in this campaign, if we win in November, I know our future will be brighter tomorrow than yesterday. Thank you all so very much. Okay, now the reason I ask this, guys, is because last night after Hillary Clinton gave that speech, there were a lot of male pundits who came out and said that she should stop shouting, that she sounded shrill, and that it's annoying. But nobody seems to say that about the male candidates. Leslie? You're right on there, Gretchen. Men were saying this, and I think Chris is onto something, voices that can be more annoying. First of all, it's clear she's <laughs> losing her voice, yeah. so she's really pushing it. Uh, being somebody, as Chris does, uh, works in radio, I have to say, Gretchen, I have actually been told by former bosses, sometimes when you get passionate, you sound shrill. And I'm like, well, what about the other guys on the station? How come they can yell? Right. I do think that people perceive, unfortunately, and I do think it is subconsciously sexist, if you will, 
that when a woman is being as passionate and shouting as a man, and I think all three of these candidates were shouting, rightly so, they were excited, uh, and they're campaigning to be president of this country, right. but I do think it's perceived more negatively when right. it comes from I a mean, woman's mouth. Men sound authoritative, women sound shrill. I actually heard uh, kind of a lousy excuse for it this morning on the radio that uh, men are, were used to hearing their moms yell at them because they're the primary disciplinarians in the family, oh. so they don't like to hear it later on in life. And I was like, what? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's listen to Bernie Sanders. Now, what this campaign is about, again, is thinking outside of the status quo. You do not have to accept the status quo. We can do better. Chris, sounds like yelling to me. Well, he sounds annoying. I mean, I think there's a difference. Uh, you know, oh. Hillary Clinton, I, I grew up on the North Shore of Chicago. Hillary grew up in the Chicago area. She has that kind of nasal Midwestern twang that kicks in. Oh, and her kind of like changes. me? No, no, not like. Actually, I was going to say that Leslie has a lovely and mellifluous voice, as do you, Gretchen. Uh, honestly, I don't find your voices to be shrill at all. Okay. I and many other people do find Hillary Clinton's voice to be shrill. In fact, it sounds like a cat being dragged across a oh, blackboard gosh. a lot of the time. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, uh, in, in, in being fair and balanced, I will tell you that I get uh -huh. a lot of comments from viewers when I laugh. They don't like my laugh, you know? I wonder really? if men get those same comments. Just ask them. Listeners love my laugh. Do they? Uh, well, yeah, it's, I, I always it say, the look, time. it's the one God gave me. I can't change it. So there you have it. Uh, Chris and Leslie, thank you so much. 21-year-old.